Hello, everyone. Welcome to Future of Mentoring. We're here at DrupalCon Barcelona in the year of 2015, which will become very important later. Uh, I'm here with David Hernandez Ruiz. I'm Alina McKenzie, and this is Kathy Thays. For those of you who are not familiar with the uh, format of a core conversation, we're going to be up here for maybe 20, 25 minutes or so, and after that, we're going to have an open mic afternoon where um, we all can converse about the future of mentoring. This presentation is already online, so if you want to follow along on uh, your device, you can do so at bit.ly slash future dash mentoring. That's bit.ly slash future dash mentoring. And our speaker notes are also there, so if you want to take a sneak peek at that, you're more than welcome. This presentation is done in Reveal.js, uh, and it's available on GitHub, so if you want to give this presentation yourself, you're welcome to clone our repo. We also have a Google Doc for collaborative note-taking. It is uh, located at bit.ly slash future dash mentoring dash notes. That's bit.ly slash future dash mentoring dash notes. And I would like to kindly ask one volunteer who loves taking notes and is ready to uh, be our official volunteer note taker. If you can please raise your hand. Thank you. Go ahead and put your name in the, in the spot of glory on the dock. Um, as the volunteer note taker. And uh, we would like to ask you to take notes during the Q&A, especially. Hello, I am David Hernandez. I'm a Drupal developer with more than six years of, of experience. I'm also the local organizer of my local group. I'm part of the Spanish community, not too far from here. I'm, um, I'm also been mentoring for at least, in, at least in three Drupal cons and a few more local events. I'm Alina McKenzie. I am uh, originally from Poland. Right now I'm based in Chicago. I'm a system administrator and web developer there. I've been working with Drupal for about four years uh, since Drupal 7. I've been involved with the community for about two years. And uh, I'm a mentor. I'm Kathy Thays. I'm Yasiti online. Uh, I started with Drupal nine and a half years ago and have been a mentor probably at least since Portland. Uh, I work at Black Mesh and it's my full time job to do mentoring and contribute to Core. When was Portland? Uh, I don't know. 2013? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we are going to follow a little bit of history. So the past, you are not defined by your past. You are prepared by your past. So we are, I'm going to talk about where we are going, starting from the very beginning. And we must acknowledge where we have been and where we are now. So this story starts at 2011. Uh, Drupal.org gets a new feature that allows uh, the issue summaries to be editable. Then it, there was also an initiative to get as many issues to get updated. That initiative, initiative was started by XGM. Yes, say hi. <laughs> also, uh, we start doing the IRC office hours in an initiative started by Cats National with the help with XGM again. And they started doing weekly meetings on IRC. Doing, uh, at the beginning, it was issue triaging only. Also, it, there was the neat stacks were starting to get used and getting popularized. The office hours helped to standardize all this usage of tags. Um, we started using the spreadsheets to track attendance and skill levels to the office hours and sprints. We move a little bit forward to 2012, where G. Hotsdon Jennifer created the first docu uh, contributor task document as a central page place for people to find out ho how they could contribute to Drupal. We also have the first 
DrupalCon Sprints Day in Denver. It was a full day of sprints with two rooms, one for general sprints, one for um, mentor sprints, and it was called the Core Office Hours Sprint. There w it was also the first time with a sprint and also the first time with a, a live commit. If you don't know what the live commit is, is when Dries or another core maintainer, but I think always Dries comes to the stage and commits uh, uh, commit done during the sprint. Also, it's the year where Drupal Mentoring was created but by XGM again. And it was to, the idea was to build a community around mentors and mentees where people could say what they were doing, uh, what their the attendance list, the, who were their, their mentors, and so on. In 2013, Drupal.org got upgraded for to Drupal 7, but that looks cool, but also remove the JSON feature uh, with the information about the issues, and that broke DrupalMentoring.org. So it forced us to start doing the things we are doing on Drupal Mentoring on Drupal.org. We have to find workarounds. So before the assigned field was used to indicate when people started writing code on the issues, and Drupal Mentoring used uh, we used Drupal Mentoring to put the information about what we were doing apart from the writing code, maybe reviews and so on. So now we start saying on the comments, I'm starting on a task and say, I say what I'm gonna do on the issue. This change in, beha in the behavior had many benefits as it helps part participants conquer their fear to comment on issue kiwis even if they are not providing a patch or doing a big improvement. It also happens that it also helps to the community to see what's going on and what everyone is doing. <coughs> and more exposure of mentoring integrated into the normal workflow also. So 2014, it was the first time when, where the Drupal Association provided t-shirts for the mentors. Sorry. Yeah, it was the first time that Drupal Association provided t-shirts for the mentors on the sprints. Um, Drupal, uh, the DR editor added the button to add the remaining task template. That was a big improvement. Mentors in the past, will, before on the sprints, people, on the, the mentors had to help the new people to set up the full environment, like installing Apache, PHP, JIT, teaching about JIT. Um, that took a lot of time, and there was a lot of different environments. So. There was an initiative by Brian Gilbert, Reality Loop, who is here also, say hi. hi. <laughs> who had the goal to pick some standard set of tools that were likely to work on a wide variety of machines and were good enough to get people started on a sprint day without uh, wasting the time of the mentors teaching all the tools technologies. So we decided to start using Akia def def Desktop that was not that usable before. So Brian and Score worked very closely with Akia to get the ad beta ready for an upcoming sprint in time. So the Akia Dev Desktop evolved thanks to the mentors to get use usable for us during the sprints. It also was the first time we used the contributor task cards. It was on New Zealand, Drupal South, and it has been used all around on all the Drupal cons since that, and we refine them over the next Drupal cons. Oh, yeah, we have the cards here. Yeah. So now we had originally only five cards, the Explorer, Community Contributor, Contributor, Use Mover, Developer, and Mentor. And this year we have added the Documentor Task card. These cards have like a little information about what it's all about this role, the tasks that the people on this card can do and also the links to documentation. So it helps a lot to get started. I need everybody can download it and print it, print them to use them on their sprints. And we got the stickers if you achieve the goals. Oh yeah, and they are in English and Spanish. Fantastic, thank you, David. So this brings us to the present. They say, or actually Bill Keen says, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift, and that's why we call it a present. 
So I'm Alina McKenzie. I've been involved with the core mentoring program uh, essentially since last con, since Amsterdam, I would say, uh, in a more involved capacity. I am the lead uh, mentor uh, for communications. And I'm also kind of the person that's behind the scenes uh, doing a lot of uh, little uh, things to enable other mentors to be their best and uh, not have to worry about you know, things like documenting things or, or prepare, preparing uh, or writing emails. So um, I'm going to define the present not just as like today, now at you know 2.26 p.m., but more, more so in the last couple of months to tell you about the exciting things that have happened uh, since, since last um, DrupalCon here in Europe. Um, one great thing that happened is that uh, we've gotten a lot more uh, Drupal Association support. And DrupalCon sprints and mentoring are very tightly linked. So at Bogota, Kathy and uh, the DA sat down together and documented all of the sprint planning tasks. And um, there's quite a lot of that. Since then, um, having that documentation has helped the DA staff to begin implementing uh, sprint planning tasks for LA and uh, sort of take over some of the uh, load and some of the activity that we had to do ourselves. Um, what does that mean? Well, the DA provides financial support for the sprint task cards, um, which David just showed you for printing them. Uh, we're still responsible for designing. Um, stickers, everybody loves stickers. Um, new contributors and sprinters can pick them up uh, during the sprint. We have uh, lunch, right? Food, food gets people to get through the whole uh, sprint day signs and the booth at the exhibit hall that uh, recruits more uh, mentors and sprint participants at the con. So we're really, really happy that the DA has uh, taken a more active role in supporting um, the core mentoring um, initiatives. The DA also provides DrupalCon tickets for experienced mentors, which uh, otherwise some mentors cannot travel um, to DrupalCons, and that makes it a lot easier. Um, for mentors to be there, especially experienced mentors. Since last con, we now are on groups.drupal.org. We have a mentoring group. And uh, our main goal for that group was to make our mentoring, our collective mentoring wisdom, a lot more distributed and a lot more transparent. We want our activities to not just be locked down into Google Docs or uh, emails, but be public so that anyone can come in and see what we do and how we do it. What do we use the groups uh, that Drupal.org site for? We announce our monthly mentor meetings. We have meetings every Saturday at uh, 2030 UTC. And we announce them at, um, on the site. We also, after each meeting, we post our meeting minutes so that if you miss the meeting, you can um, review what we talked about. And uh, we of course, um, have people who post questions to our group, and we address those questions from mentors. In addition to the group, we now have a official project. And uh, the goal of our, we've always had the project. It was a sandbox, uh, I believe, um, under XJM's sandbox space. But now it's an official project at uh, drupal.org slash project slash mentoring. And the goal here is to have our to-do lists, our tasks, discoverable so that any Drupal.org user, that includes like everyone in this room, to be able to comment, to edit, and to work on them without having you know, explicit permission um, to, to access that information if we were to have it instead in a uh, separate system like Google Docs or some other site or uh, more specified, more specialized tools like Trello. We track tasks as issues, and we use the plan issues for documenting overarching tasks that have um, a sort of a global meaning, and then we use uh, specific issues for conference, um, conference tasks, conference-related tasks. And it also allows us to track due dates, so, you know, by what um, point should we have uh, a, a given number of mentors signed up and, and so on. We've made great strides in improving our documentation. This documentation um, can be found as the child pages of Drupal.org core mentoring page. 
we have a, a mentoring at Drupal events doc, which is uh, quite extensive. It includes notes that were taken at a mentor orientation in Bogota. And now we use it at mentor orientation. We do a dramatic reading by all of attending um, mentors to sort of get them engaged in, 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 the, um, in the material. We have a mentoring coordinator and mentor lead responsibility pages, which describe the responsibilities of the sprint and planning lead, the sprint room lead, the booth lead, the communications lead, the first time sprinter lead, sprinter workshop lead, and novice issue triage lead, so that um, that information is not locked up in our heads or our personal notes, but rather available to, for anyone to see um, what mentors do. In Los Angeles uh, this year, we've had our core commit um, that David mentioned. It happened at the earliest hour ever. It happened at 2 p.m. And that's sort of like a high point of the day. Uh, you know, everybody gets up on the stage and uh, the core uh, committer is there and explains what they do. Everybody's role is explained. Um, it's kind of like, woohoo, it all uh, goes into directly into the project. After that, usually people kind of taper out and um, head out. So our core mentored sprint room, um, as, as it emptied out, what we did was we had the remaining first-time contributors join the general sprint that's usually in a separate uh, location. And together with the general sprinters, the new contributors could continue their work to, um, together with experienced contributors and initiative leads, uh, which sort of shows us a trend that we have, which is integrating you know, separate sites into Drupal.org and integrating our new contributors into our, our general contributor pool. Finally, we've improved some communications. Uh, when I first started last year uh, at DrupalCon Amsterdam, I used my personal email to send out emails, and uh, then I use a Google spreadsheet add-on to, to mass email people, which is kind of unwieldy. Uh, we now use MailChimp, which has been great. Uh, starting with Bogota, we use MailChimp, and it, the reusable templates and scheduled emails are, are fantastic. And we plan to do uh, some more things with that. So um, Drupal 7 had 900 contributors with commit mentions. Drupal 8 has over 3,000. Right, so we can kind of say that we are successful, yeah? Yeah, I, th I think so. In fact, um, our success with getting new contributors involved in mentoring has, had, um, has inspired other open source projects. We've had folks from Docker who were interested in investigating our techniques, you know, come and ask us um, what we do and how we do what we do. So I think this bodes very well for the future. The future. So I'm Kathy. Uh, yes, CT. Um, I um, went to Denver as a participant and then uh, have been involved in like every DrupalCon almost uh, since then and got really involved as a like a lead in Portland. Um, with Jess and Andrea and, and Addie. Um, and so I've seen this whole thing. I've experienced it personally, the pain of the past and the changes that we've gone through and, and the, all the conversations that we've had about what we want things to be like. Uh, so the vision for the future. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. Um, so in general, I think um, what we want to do is make it so we don't need mentors to help new contributors over barriers that are in their way to contribution. We want the information that people need to know in order to contribute to be uh, on demand, uh, discoverable, and, uh, and, and usable for them so they don't need to have somebody to show them how to get there. They just, it just works. Um, and when we do that, that will free up 
all of these incredibly passionate people that we have that are doing the mentoring that we have right now to do a different kind of mentoring. 2015? We're the future. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's Back to the Future, and he's saying, 2015? You mean we're in the future? <laughs> all right, so to get our vision of the future... Um, we want to continue getting more automation. So we still have a ton of manual tasks uh, that mentor, planner, leady people are doing. Uh, and they have more valuable skills and more ways that we could use their time uh, to be getting even more participation from people if we could free them up. So one of the things that happens uh, for DrupalCon is we have a page on the DrupalCon website where people can fill out a web form to sign up to mentor. And when they fill out that web form, um, we get an email to now generic Gmail uh, mentoring account, which is nice. Uh, and it has the information from the fields. And it has a couple of snippets of text that's formatted to make some of the manual things we have to do later easier. Um, one of the things though, is we have to get each of those people on the list inside MailChimp. And then MailChimp is awesome and is doing all kinds of automatic stuff for us. Um, what we want to do is have MailChimp integration on the events site that uses the MailChimp API so when somebody fills out the form, they get added to the right list. Like, that's completely possible to do. We just have to figure out what the barriers are to it and implications and then help make it happen. Um, so the way we're tracking that is on issue 2572663. Uh, the other th uh, thing that is done manually is we have a page uh, on the DrupalCon sites for each event that talks about um, what the core sprint is, what the mentored core sprint is. And it lists all of the mentors that sign up. And what we used to do is get an email and it would say somebody signed up and we would go onto the page and edit it and then add that person's name to it and save it. It was very painful and very boring. Um, and what we'd really like to have is just have a view of the web form results and it just gets the person's name and their drupal.org and makes that list for us. Uh, but since we are in the future right now, it turns out we did this yesterday, last night. <laughs> So like one of these huge manual tasks that we had to do, now we don't have to do anymore. And so now we have that time to do something else. And it's really great. Um, and the DA staff is awesome. Um, oh, the reason why we list the mentors on this page is because um, it's an acknowledgement, uh, like a recognition of these people who are volunteering and giving up their days and also doing a bunch of planning ahead of time. We're like, look how awesome these people are. And then they can show their friends, they can be like, look, I'm an official mentor, and it's on the website. The other thing having a list of mentor does is it gets more people to come to the sprint because they look um, at that list and they're like, oh my God, Justifish is gonna mentor all day on Friday? I would love to work with Sally Young. And then they sign up and then they come. Or like whoever is some name that they've heard of somewhere that they can see who those people are, and then they come, and then they want to work with them. So it's really good both for the mentors and to encourage participation. So it's nice that that's automatic now, and it's just going to happen. Ah, so, ah, so this issue, if you want to see what it looks like, it's marked fixed. It's 2239073. Uh, um, another thing that mentors always have to do is uh, help New contributors find an issue. People are experts in Drupal. They know all tons of things. They have a job or they have their own project and they want to contribute. And I have had so many people here at this con stop me in the hallway and say, I went into the sprint room, but I didn't know what to do and I don't know how to work on an issue. I want to help. Uh, there was a tweet about it on Twitter Right? Like, I ask people and I not, nobody will help me figure out what to do. Like, people want to help, but they don't know how to do it on their own. So one of the things we can do to help people with this is to make it easier for people to find relevant first issues for them to work on. 
Uh, one thing is we have a ton of documentation on Drupal.org, uh, but it's confusing. It has duplicate information in multiple places. It's really long. It may not be the most discoverable thing. So we have an issue to consolidate it, distill it, make sure it's updated, and make sure it's discoverable by those people who are wanting to do something. Uh, and this is uh, to improve our novice contribution uh, guide on Drupal.org. And it's 2332789. The sad thing about this issue is it's really old. Uh, I think it was Austin. Uh, the, the two days after the sprint, um, one of the days I sat down with Boyan and we identified the problem, gathered the information, all the locations of things, and, um, and made the issue. And part of the problem of why this hasn't been fixed is we don't have any one person to, to champion this issue who will just grab onto it and not let it go until it's done. Uh, neither me nor Boyan can dedicate all of our energies to that. So we really need somebody who can grab onto this. And then the other thing that makes this difficult is um, it involves changes to Drupal.org. So we have to consider other priorities that Drupal.org has, maybe upcoming improvements that we might want to wait for that would make doing some of this easier. And so this is a hard problem, um, but it will help so many people. We really need somebody to help with it. Uh, the other thing that will help people discover uh, relevant first issues for them is something that is planned to being done, but not like right away, uh, and that is to get topic pages. And so issue for this is 1290740. And the idea behind topic pages is it puts all of the relevant information all together uh, so it's discoverable and you have context for understanding things. So a topic page would have recent news items, uh, a sticky post that describes the current priorities for, uh, for example, an initiative like a multilingual initiative. It would show people who are active in their um, uh, issues that are current priorities and if the um, leads of that initiative have tagged things as being good for new contributors, it can have a special like new contributor section, these issues for that initiative. And so it's not just an issue picked out at random and you don't understand what the priorities and the background of a thing is. It's putting everything all together. So that will also really help people um, be able to find their own first issues. If they find their own first issue, uh, the next thing that mentors do that we can automate is have instructions on the issue for how to work on the issue. People can have a problem, Google for it, find the issue uh, as part of uh, some site they're building, and then they're like, great, you know what, I'm already doing this for this project, I can also help fix this issue, but they're looking at the issue page and there are no instructions on that page for how to work on the issue. So, uh, have a couple of different ideas for how to help that. One is 2013222. Uh, and this would um, add some metadata to an issue um, that would say these are the remaining tasks that need to be done in order to complete this issue. It could track whether or not they're done, but still say what they all needed to be. And since it knows the tasks, it can um, include automatic links to instructions on how to do the tasks. And that will be really helpful for people who are looking at an issue page and say they want to help. They'll see what there is to do and instructions for how to do it. There's a little bit more context that is needed also uh, on an issue and another different approach, um, but essentially this would also help with that problem. So another approach is at 2193871, and this idea is to use um, context and put blocks on issue pages that would say something like, um, this issue's status is active. Uh, it is possibly in discussion or discussion is done and waiting for a patch. Here's how to make a patch. Um, so it can get more information about lots of different things and then put that information on the page where people want to see it. 
part of the context that people need when they have an issue is it's, it's like impossible for a new contributor to open up an issue page and say, this would be a good use of my time or this is not a good use of my time. They don't have that context. Experienced contributors who are mentoring, who are working at the Sprint can help people pick issues to work on because they have more information. So we should figure out how to say that information and just put it on the issue. So uh, 2572061 is add a dismissible notification when somebody goes to a core issue while in whatever phase of release it is. So, <laughs> just as scared. Uh, so I made this issue like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the idea is um, there is a first time that you go to an issue and that issue is in the core project. And we have dismissible notifications, I think. We've seen them before on Drupal.org. Maybe the profile thing, terms of service. Uh, the 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 security thing. I don't. But there might be, or not. Okay. So, but the idea is, you would you would you would first your first time you open up a core issue and you get a notification and it says something like, uh, "Core is currently in." Uh, well, okay, so actually I think what I, what I changed the words to be was like, uh, depending upon the phase of the release, uh, certain issues um, can be worked on or something. You've got to work on the wording. And then it has a link to a docs page, which is about the release phase, uh, release cycle of Drupal, which hopefully is updated with the current release phase, and then that probably has a, has a link to the docs page, which explains what's, it's allow what's allowed to be committable um, during that. So like if we had this for the beta, right, it would have said, you know, depending upon the, things can be workable depending upon the release phase, go read this thing. And it would have gone to the page that said, here's the release cycle, we're currently in the beta. Here's another docs page which explains which things are committable in the beta. And then they would have found that awesome, flow graph which explained which things are uh, workable and they would have learned about beta evaluations and documenting them on the issue and everything. So the idea here is something to make it discoverable but not annoying and on every single issue. But I would also be up for annoying on every single issue. Uh, so I, I would be really keen to get some um, help fine tuning the idea here. <laughs> All right. Um, if they find an issue that they decide is worthy of uh, investing their time in and working on. Uh, we can also alleviate some repetitive work from mentors by making it super easy for those contributors to get in a, uh, an environment for them to do their work. So automating the setup, having it be the uh, tools that experienced contributors like have kind of congregated around and just makes setting them up super easy. Um, We've changed our mind over many, many years about what that should be, and there's two different needs. There's one for what do we need on the sprint day when we Wi-Fi is an issue, and there's also what do people need long-term after the sprint day if they're at home and they have great Wi-Fi, what should they be using all the time? But I think we're ready to come back and look at this and, and think about it some more. Um, so that's 2233509. And then the other thing that will, um, is a part of my vision for the future is to remove a barrier, not just to new contributors, but to remove the barrier to becoming a mentor. And there are a bunch of people who cannot uh, travel to a DrupalCon. And so we want to continue the documentation uh, that we've done in terms of getting everything out of people's heads about how you pull this thing off and putting it on Drupal.org. Um, because like everything else, it makes it discoverable and it also allows for more improvements because now anybody who has a good idea can edit it and improve it. Uh, so we still have uh, a few things to um, kind of document about the how do you have a sprint at DrupalCon. So we want to have um, the open mic conversation. 
Um, I have some things, some topics I would like to, like anything, any idea that's popped into your head since we started, like that would be great. But also, I don't know how we measure the success of the mentoring program. Like if we make a change in it, is it making it better or not? So we need some ideas on how to measure success. And the idea here is to free up mentors from these repetitive manually, you know, tasks. But what are we freeing them up for? Like people say sometimes, you know, mentors want to do real mentoring. Like what the heck is that? Um, so open mic. Uh, while uh, we have the conversation, I'm just going to leave some links up here. Uh, one to evaluate our session and the other one for the notes. Because uh, anybody can edit that Google Doc. It um, uh, doesn't have to just be Val. Uh, if you could say your name and your Drupal.org name, that'd be great. Hi, my name is Anna. Drupal.org is a Kalata. Uh, I'm a first-time mentor um, and actually uh, have uh, received a uh, scholarship, I guess, or grant to attend DrupalCon um, because um, of me trying to be a mentor. And I guess I was wondering, um, are there any models in open source communities, um, in, in other communities, for automating this whole onboarding new contributors um, anything that we could use as a guideline or are kind of like we going to be the example once we figure this stuff out? I don't know if there's any patterns that we can look at for um, automation of things. That's I don't even think I've asked myself that question before, so we should find out. Um, I know we're one of the most successful open source projects in terms of getting people involved. And um, a couple of times this summer, I went to not Drupal conferences and talked to people from tiny uh, open source projects, uh, Unix distributions, WordPress, Docker, like just tons of people. And when we talked about mentoring, mostly they had questions for me. Um, now, what we have looked at, though, uh, it, that other open source projects are doing better than us is their new contributor documentation. And so that issue that I talked about that needs some help has some research already on it, on what other projects are doing and some samples and then some ideas to just take what they're doing as, as working really well and do that. So I know we've looked at the documentation of other open source projects, but I don't think we've looked at automation. That's a good idea to do. Uh, Brian Gilbert, Reality Loop on Drupal.org. Uh, I, I think from my experience being a mentor at several DrupalCons now, the freeing up time is probably so they can attend the conference because this is the first <laughs> time I've been to a session for about four DrupalCons. Um, so I think that would help people be more willing to be a mentor, um, although I was doing things that were probably more involved than some of the regular mentors. But... Um, I just had an idea, and I've already put it in the Google Doc, of we Good. could potentially automate the booth, which would free up a lot of time. Aw, but that's the part that the humans... I know, but if you make it really funny, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, it's an idea anyway. It doesn't have to be done, but that's one thing that could, you know, motion sensors, and it wouldn't... <laughs> <laughs> Brian. So like, hey, you. <laughs> okay, so earlier I was talking about how uh, one time after DrupalCon, I, I, I sat, one time after DrupalCon, I sat down with Boyan and we went through the thing about the new contributor task document. I'm pretty sure that was the day after I sat down next to Brian. And Brian and I had led mentoring for the first time. And he was sitting down next to me and all he did was tool me up. Hmm. Like he'd be like watching me do something and he's like, no, 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 there's an app for that. Like, we can automate that, and we can automate that. That's what I love about Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Changed my life. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that was all I had. Um, well, well, the bold. Uh, I would extend Brian's suggestion, and we can not only automate the booth, but probably we can automate the whole mentoring process. And... Uh, uh, Kathy has talked about that, that uh, the issue page 
needs to uh, contain some links maybe to how people can work on that issue. Mm. But I think that there is a lot of work done on, in that direction, and there are a lot of links, like contributor links, first-time contributor links, and uh, we have links to uh, better evaluation phase, what needs to be done. My personal problem with that is that if I want to read all this, first of all, I need to click, I don't know, 100 links on one page. So, and I really need all this information because I need to be able like, to, evaluate, to write better evaluation. I need to keep open 15 docs at one time, I think. So I think, first of all, we can borrow a uh, Dreaditor user interface. If you work with Dreaditor on an issue, you keep um, being on the same page. All is opening in, in pop-ups, so, so um, it's much better, for, for me at least. And uh, that's first point. And the second point, what if we can make interaction with the same editor or some other tool more automatic? Because better evaluation is basically a wizard. So there, it's a series of questions that I, as a reviewer, needs to answer. And next step is based on answer to the previous step. So this is pretty uh, wizard. So I click on several places and end up with ready better evaluation. I'm and that can be... I'm intrigued. And that's not a big deal, I think, in terms of developing. Very cool. Um, so that actually reminds me of one of the things I tried to work on for, I think for LA, was to get conditional fields because adding extra fields to the mentor sign-up form, or sorry, just the, the conference sign-up form was something that the DA didn't want to do. And I did some work with uh, Jay Perry about that, but I don't know where it ever got to. Hmm. So that could be something that's integrated, but it's also a really good thing that the extra time that we free up for mentors could go towards. Yeah. My name is Kalpana Guel, K Guel on Drupal.org. So in my previous session, I said like um, participants can add mentor to their D.O page. So hmm. that's just a small token. But what else can be done so companies recognize the value of mentoring? Because we are all volunteers spending time not working on issues for ourselves, but helping other people working on their issues. So what can be done so um, the recognition is much more wider than just the D.O profile page? Um, also, I have been saying that why DA always, um, for all the Drupal cons, provide mentor t-shirt. I think that is just a expense that can be eliminated, not a big deal, but just an idea and thought I wanted to share. Um, the third thing I want to say that mentoring does really good job for novice issues, but what about mentoring mentors on the major and critical issues? So those are not just limited to the top core contributors, but overall to the community. So we cannot, we can say that contributors are not, or participants are not just limited to novice issues or writing issue summaries or doing manual testing or re-rolling the patch, but much more. And maybe we can encourage them to come and repeat contribution because they will gain knowledge uh, by working on some more critical or major or important issues. Yeah. I think um, there is a post on groups.drupal.org about um, making, like picking a color and just saying this color is mentor t-shirt color. And then people can just bring that shirt with them whenever they go to a camp. Um, and ha uh, I think that's especially useful for uh, camps who can't afford uh, a s small run of of shirts just so their mentors can be identifiable. So the purpose of the t-shirts we mentioned when we uh, when the DA started giving them to us is that they're a different color than any of the other con shirts or the volunteer shirts. And at um, the Friday Sprint, what we have is we have maybe two to 300 people in a room and we need some way of visualize, like identifying which of those people are wanting to answer your question. And t-shirts are the best way, um, I think, to do that. Um, we did something um, in Bogota where instead of the DA paying for shirts, 
um, uh, Bluehost brought black shirts that are that were very m mildly logoed, like it was very small, mostly black, and we got green painters tape. And uh, mentors took turns uh, putting designs on the back of each other's shirts, so they were black with ne huge neon green uh, designs on them, and uh, and that worked out really well. But I think in terms of the benefit that we get from it, I think it's totally worth the expense to have a, a specially colored shirt at a DrupalCon. Um, I also think that for some people, the, their first mentor t-shirt that they wear at other places is recognition and a, and a badge of honor um, for them at the next con. They can show up with the mentor t-shirt from a previous con and be like, yep. I've mentored before, and people can recognize that they have mentored before, too. It's like putting on your Drupal.org profile, I'm a mentor, except you wear it. Um, so that's pretty good. I think one of the... Well, I mean, Jess is here. We could, we could, she'll let me know if I'm right or not. But if we think back about one of the purposes that the DrupalCon mentored sprint has served in the past was the general sprint room where there would be um, leaders in their area. So maybe, you know, media, um, I don't know what the heck people worked on before there was composer, um, right, rules. Uh, but then also uh, initiatives with inside Drupal core. Um, so, or, so there were people who had a, maybe a team, so like one uber like experienced person who was blessed by Dries, right? And then they probably had active contributors that they dealt with normally. And these are like the super skilled people who are working on the really interesting issues, right? And th those people in the past, when approached by new people who are like, oh my God, you're I'm trying to think who I can use as an example. <laughs> Oh my God, you're a Hayrocker. Um, like, I want to help with CMI. I can envision that it may have been some thoughts that passed through Greg's head. Like, I don't have freaking time to teach this person how to make a patch. And I'm going to explain to them where we are and what our priorities are. And I'm going to invest my time in them. And they're going to work on a thing, not get it done won't post their broken thing on the issue, leave, and I will never see them again. And what happens to initiative owners or other people who are, have big projects is they have this experience over and over and over again. And even though they, as humans, want to help each individual, because they have this pattern, they learn that they don't get their, their return on investment. Their time is better spent being focused. And... This, I think this was especially true many years ago. And one of the things that the core mentoring uh, program has done, both through the office hours um, and at cons, is we take people who have never done anything before and we teach them the basics. We make sure that they understand how to change issue statuses so they don't go into somebody else's like, super critical issue and like, totally set it wrong. We make sure they know the basic things for whatever they're going to end up doing. So like... Maybe they're going to be doing um, QA testing for UI changes. So we help them do that and make before and after screenshots. And so they even know that that's a thing to do so that, that they can identify which issues need that. So that when they know to put their before and after screenshots in the issue summary. So they know not to screenshot their whole entire computer screen and to crop it and to draw arrows and that they need, like, we teach them those things so that when they, like, when they go to join these initiatives or work with these like people that they really want to work with, they are not annoying. They actually know what to do. So you could walk up to, um, to Gabor and you could say, hey, I want to work on an issue. And he could say, you know, oh, what do you want to do? And he'd be like, oh, great. We just had this patch posted on this issue. It makes a change to this form. Can you do before and after screenshots on it? And that person does it. And Gabor doesn't need to sit down and teach them how to do it. So if you think, if you consider that that was part of the purpose, that's, 
I don't know, like, that's, that's what we were doing. We were getting people ready so that they could join the, the group that would orna organically integrate them and, and, and first have them work in pairs on a major and then have them work on a critical. And I would say if our community is failing at getting people involved in the real issues, I don't necessarily think that's a problem with the mentoring program. I think it's a problem with the people we are picking to lead initiatives. And if we picked people with a different perspective to lead initiatives, then that would be solved. I don't think we need to solve it with mentoring. We don't need special mentors who mentor like the cool things. Um, now, one of the things Dree said in his keynote was for features or initiatives or whatever, is that one of the lessons that he's learned is that um, you need a diverse cross-functional team to lead. And I would hope that one of the qualities that would they people who are picking these teams would look for is that you need somebody who's going to be thinking about mentoring. Not mentoring new contributors, but mentoring inside their group. Um, the other question that you had was how do we recognize mentors? I think um, we we have the shirts, which they get. We have their profiles. Sometimes um, we take a big picture at the end of the day. Um, that's pretty sweet because you can show it to your friends. Um, there could be a blog post, like a wrap-up blog post is something I think that I've done a lot. Um, I could use somebody else to do that. Um, but those can list the mentors and then that can go out on Drupal Planet. Um, that could be great. I don't know if part of your question was how do we get people's employers to recognize the benefit to the employer of people doing mentoring. And I think uh, if that's a, a question, I think we should think really hard about that. Maybe put it specifically in the Google Doc and get a lot of people's different opinions about that. I don't think we do a particularly good job right now of having like a letter to your boss about um, over or left? Are we 10 minutes over? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, I don't think we have like a letter to your boss, this is why you should uh, fund your employer, uh, fund your employee to contribute to CORE. The best thing we've got, I think, in terms of that is the blog post that I wrote on the uh, Black Mesh blog a while ago about um, strategies for companies funding CORE but that's still not really the benefits to the company. Uh, so that, I think we have a need for that, and maybe after we get that done, we could do a benefits for funding mentoring. But I actually don't know if there is. I have, there is. I have something directly related to that. I, I do. Oh. Go ahead. No. no way, man. Let Alina go. Um, one thing that oh, this we, is not Alina. Um, I'm not Alina. I'm Jess. I'm XJM. Um, I'm Drupal 8 release manager, core mentor, mentor, mentor. How many did we get? Three. Anyway, um, one thing that um, Kalpana has pointed out in the past is that we need to make sure that people who mentor contribution on an issue also get credit as contributors for that issue on Drupal.org. Mm. We have this new functionality that allows us to um, surface issue credits for non-patch contribution for reviews and other kinds of contribution in the issue that goes on someone's contributor profile. It can go on the, their organization page and there's all kinds of work under development currently so that organizations get, get credit on Drupal.org for the way that their, their members contribute. And so one thing that we can do right now is when you're mentoring contributors on an issue, or when you're mentoring other mentors about mentoring contributors on an issue, make sure that mentor also posts a comment on their issue and says, I am helping so-and-so work on such and such on Drupal.org. And it's not your, if your name, you actually right now have to post an issue comment yourself because I as a core committer can, once that issue is going to be committed to core, just so long as you have one comment on that issue somewhere, check a little box, and then your organization and your user profile will receive credit for that issue because of the mentoring work that you did. 
If, yes, and when we, so I think we should add that to the instructions then for Friday um, to tell our mentors. That's a super good idea. And in terms of benefits to the employer, that will only, like, that'll give recognition to the mentor, which would be nice. We need to make sure that those people know how to attribute their time to their company if they want to. So if they are being paid to be there on Friday, they could attribute that effort to their company, and then the company would get a benefit from it. Alina, come back. I'm Eric uh, on, Suto, um, on Didado Sutosan. Um, the new uh, documenter cards gave me an idea. Would it help um, if we, in our wisdom as community or mentors, whatever, decide that a certain subject is not focused, that a certain subject doesn't have enough people working on it? Let's say UX. We, we want to have more UX people in the community being act, being active, getting active. Would it help to make, for example, a UX card to uh, starting tasks and then by that way attracting, uh, well, make surfacing a, a subject for new contributors? Yeah, I'm not sure. I have to say that initially I thought these cards were a terrible idea and uh, I really didn't want to do them. Uh, but Andrea was like, they're freaking awesome. And I trust Andrea. Like, we don't have to agree on everything. And if she sees value in it and wants to, like, make it be done, I'm like, fine, good luck. Uh, and lots of people like these. So Are I, they being used? They are being used in the fact that we are printing them and handing them out. Okay. Um, I don't know how useful people are finding them. One of the super great things about having Alina on the team in the last year is that she's brilliant. And uh, she's and in some one of the things that we've automated that we left off of the presentation was um, the mentor feedback. Uh, so we sent out a survey and um, and then people answer and then we can evaluate things. I think we could do the same thing with the participants of the sprint if we had a list of people who had participated in the sprint. And we could send them a survey and we could ask them, did you use the sprint card? Did you find it useful? We, and, and we might maybe also ask mentors at the end of the day whether they have s people seen using it. Yeah. That's a, we can a, include a, that in a low the tech too. indication. But I, I, so I kind of think maybe like we haven't really talked about measures of success of, the, of, of mentoring yet, but that could be something that maybe we would want to measure whether or not we want to invest our energy in is like adding more things to this. I think you. UX people who have never contributed to core before are still going to go through the steps that we already have. And so if we're talking about the sprint day, I don't think anybody could get through these steps and another one that that depends on these. Like this is already a ton of stuff to do. Um, so that and then now you're talking about like somebody's second sprint experience, right? So they've done this and now they're ready to like do something else. And, and so I don't really know. So we should think about it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hi, I'm, I'm XJM again. Um, so I just wanted to respond to a couple of things. Um, one question that Kathy asked, or was it Alina? One of you asked, uh, earlier was, so what are we freeing up our time to do if we take these things that we shouldn't be doing that a computer could do for us and make sure that people can get the information by themselves? Um, I think one thing that uh, a lot of people think of when they think of mentoring is of doing like pair programming and pair review, collaborative, like one-on-one -on -one or one-on-three small exercises. I think um, because of the scale of our sprints at DrupalCon and the scale of nitpicky things people have to learn, we lose some of that because uh, mentors become in, in some ways like like crowd herding, um, sort of like high level task selection management helpers and, and have less opportunity to share their, their individual 
knowledge and experience with someone um, and also it, they lose some of the opportunity to learn from that that new person that they're mentoring as well because it should go both ways. So that's that's my hope for the future. Um, I think Val's suggestion about um, the the interactive uh, issue summary evaluation is huge. Uh, like the beta evaluation is like a particularly it's Right, exactly. It's it, it's like a spe an extreme specific example, but the con the questions that you have to answer for that are always relevant. And I think that um, I, uh, I I believe that Symphony has some GitHub integration that covers some of the kind of metadata about an issue that we care about for for issue evaluation under Poldark. We should look at that. We should look at how they do that, and we should try to do something similar so that people have. Uh, at, dry editor is always a first good step to prototype stuff, but you know eventually it should also be part of the functionality on Drupal.org. Yeah. One and, of the nice things about the new maintainers of dry editor is they're refusing to put any new features in it. Um, so they're like, no, we should be fixing things on Drupal.org because we want our tools to be available to everybody, mm -hmm. not just people who know about the secret thing you have to download. And I think that's actually a really good thing. Um, I will say that one one challenge for this kind of functionality, and I also like Kathy's suggestion about about a notification that you know this issue is filed against Drupal 8.0.x, which is currently in release candidate. Here's a link to what that means. Is beautiful and mind blowing. But what challenge for that, as as well as for the other issue evaluation, is that uh, Drupal.org issues um, like core is a a significant audience, but there's also thousands of contributed modules and themes and all kinds of distributions, all kinds of other projects that all say, share the same like it, the, the same node type, the yeah. same field set. And so, so there, it makes it challenging to introduce um, things in a way. And we, we have this problem with change records too. There's a lot of customizations to how change records work that we would like to add that would make them more helpful for Drupal core issues that aren't necessarily relevant for other projects or that it's hard to make them generic enough. Yeah, custom so have, settings per module makes a feature harder to implement, but more tolerable by contrib who doesn't want to have to mess with stuff just because core does. They, they have their own rules. They do, yeah. I mean, we yeah. come up with that with the, with the issue tasks problem, too. Where we Neil want to Drum said that. they have their own rules. Yeah. OK, oh, so um, would, uh, one more from Brian, or? Sorry, I have two, two more things. OK. Yeah. Um, thing, we're sorry, short, we uh, are super short. The session just ended, but there is a 30 minutes break yeah, that we, have, we can use. We have, we're two minutes over, three minutes over. Okay. Okay. There is a 30 minutes break. So, oh, 30 minutes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, we can take all time. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, so have you guys been out in the exhibition hall? You saw that thing on the floor that has my name and Kathy's name and who's ever in big letters and people keep tweeting at me about it. Um, we should have something like that that's not about patch contribution. We should have that of mentors. Yeah. That, that information is a, like at, at TripleCon Portland, we did the same thing on the mentor booth. We had the thing of the core commit message name tag cloud thing. We're so far past that. Mentors are the people that, that we should yeah. be we listing. Don't, we don't need any new contributors. <laughs> we have 3,000 <laughs> 3, of them. Oh. That's kind of, well, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I've, I've, I've so wait, do you really think a tag cloud of mentor names is a good idea? Because, yes. All right. Okay. I, How do we get the data? No, I, I, I think that, I think that, I think that including mentors, like we need to make sure that mentors in, are included in that contribution information, right? Mentoring is a first-class kind of contribution. It is as right. important to resolving an issue so as through, creating a So through the comment it. attributions. Right. But I, I also would love point. to have a, like, yeah. here are people who have, who have mentored at, at, at DrupalCon Barcelona and see their names there. That's, some, that's the kind of, like, it, unless they prefer not to be listed, like, having their username is, is like, that's fantastic. They're part of this in the same way that speakers are, mm -hmm. like, um, important value part of that. So are the eventers. The sprints are amazing for people, and then that, that helps. Um, the two things that are most dear to my heart that, and now I forgot to note down who actually raised them in the in the Q and A. Um, number one is is getting both mentors and credit contri new contributors up that next rung of contribution so that they go from working on the simple task 
um, to working on something that's more difficult. I, I think that that's another place where I would love to see mentors mentoring more. It's like, okay, you've mastered the basics. Now let me show you what, what I do, what I work on, and here's how I get involved and, and, and the way that the area that I work on also depends on me. And also um, I think that definitely depends on having – having people work on what matters at sprints, making sure that whenever we recommend tasks for people, we really are picking something that, that is something that is going, is going to be included as much as best as we can anticipate is part of what's most important to whatever initiative or project or, you know, Drupal core final beta that they're working on at the time. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Brian Gilbert, Reality Loop again. Um, I think... One of the things that we should be trying to tell companies, like I see a lot of people when we're at the mentor booth, are you going to be here on Friday? No, I'm going home. If they've been sent here by their company, mm. I think it needs to be potentially it's a DA thing to, to say that that's part of the conference as one of the days, specifically in the date range or something. Yeah, it used to be that DrupalCon dates on the site only mm. included Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And over the years we've gotten them to include Monday and Friday on the dates on the site, but still a bunch of people are leaving on Friday, Friday and their yeah. flights are at five and, you know, they don't get up until 11 and they have to leave the sprint by two. So they just don't come. I'm even seeing people who are leaving Thursday night. Yeah. Like so, that, so yeah, I wonder if there's some messaging we can ask the events people to use when they uh, advertise to companies somehow or, or, campaign to them to yeah and i think um I someone else in the crowd said it the value to companies is that they're getting more experience there's a lot of companies who have people working with drupal who've never contributed to core never done a contrib contribution even this is how it's going to get them started so it, it i think it has a lot of value as a company owner myself so right i think i think we i think we have a little bit more experience with um thinking about the value of working on issues, but I don't know if we have as much experience with thinking about the value of having other people help other people work on issues. Mm. Now, I say that, but that's, that's my job, right? So there are some companies that don't just see the value of paying a core committer full-time to review and commit and work on issues, but do see value in not directly working on issues all the time, mm. but helping other people work on issues. So if we, and part, part of the value that uh, Black Mesh gets uh, from having me is I'm uber visible, right? And since I'm very visible, then our name is very visible too. Um, so if we're looking to maybe take some of that benefit and give it to all of the mentors that we might want to consider giving every mentor's company's name visibility somehow. And we mentioned that as part of the common attributions, but maybe there's something we can do a little well, bit more. I don't know if we have any statistics on what's the drop off on people who mentor across multiple conferences, but that's yeah. somewhere where a tag cloud might help that type of thing, like yeah. Reality Loop. Reality like, Loop Although it's my username, but like as a company, we yeah. run the local mentoring and meetups yeah. in Australia. Um, our whole team is here to mentor at the conference. I don't even know that we get much out of it in value for the company. But to me, it's an open source project. If you don't right. contribute to it, it's not going to continue to exist. So, Yeah. You know you have a microphone. <laughs> You're giving the session. You don't have to queue up. You get to interrupt the people, not wait in line. <laughs> so, so hi, um, I'm Alina. Uh, Ali Mac is my username. I'm gonna. If you've made it this far into the recording, you can't see me, but I am taking off my operational slash planning mentor hat uh. and putting on my mentor mentor hat. Um, one of the things that I've had. Um, difficulty with as a, an occasional contributor um, to give you an idea what that's like I have a modest like 20 commits me commit mentions but I don't work on Drupal all the time I pretty much only work on it at sprints 
and at Drupal cons and other Drupal events. So there's that kind of um, uh, difficulty I experience in ramping up to you know uh, fill my brain back with issues mm -hmm. that I can mentor others on because I know them better. Because mm -hmm. I've noticed that that's a really helpful thing is whenever I know, I know an issue more, um, more deeply, I can then be a better mentor uh, towards an, a person who works on it for the first time. Yes. And um, I've, I want to give a shout out to um, Emma Maria, who is the component maintainer for Bartik, for being a really great uh, person who's also a mentor and, and kind of combining both roles. Um, yeah. but, but that's, you know, that's, uh, she, she does that, um, but not a, other mem mentors are not component maintainers or are not on teams or are just occasional contributors, right, like me. Yeah. And it would really be, I think, helpful for us to be uh, somehow connected better with the teams and the component maintainers um, to have that, to have them give us, you know, a rundown of issues that we could become more familiar with. Yeah. I, I don't know how I imagine this or envision this. I'm just saying that there, it would be great to have that, uh, to have more integration. Yeah, I, I definitely think um, getting more involvement from maintainers uh, would help occasional contributors and occasional mentors be more effective. Uh, I suspect uh, part of why we don't get more component maintainers, or component is the wrong word, why we don't get more core maintainers um, in the mentored sprint room on Friday is in part because they think we don't need them. Like, we already have 60 people, right? We're going to have, like, 75 people, right? They're like, we, you don't need us. you got plenty of people over there. So we could tell them that we need them um, directly. So we could email them and say, we need you, and this is, and this is why we need you. There may be other um, things. Uh, I think this would make an incredibly good section in the Q&A Google Doc to flesh out. I think we can have a lot to think about, and I think Tim has some thoughts. I have some thoughts on that. Uh, I'm Tim Plunkett. Wait, I'm, you got to give a little bit of background. Hi, I'm Tim Plunkett. I s helped start mentoring with Jess. <laughs> there we go. Um, and I'm I haven't mentored since Munich, um, because after Munich I became paid to work on Core, so I get to come to DrupalCon and I'm like basically required to not mentor. Um, I just wanted to like say that there's other reasons that core maintainers aren't mentoring, it's because we're here to sprint ourselves. Right. There's a huge amount of pressure on experienced contributors to core to get the criticals done, yes. right? Or get whatever is critical in their project done. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure to do that. Yeah, I just wanted to point that out. That's like, it's, I miss mentoring, but you know, I'm, it's my job to not mentor at DrupalCon, basically. Yes. So, yeah. So oh, maybe yeah. we can bring, uh, instead of bringing the core maintainers to the mentors, maybe we, we can assign mentors to core maintainers. That, that works too. I mean, mentees uh, to... Like them follow me around, <laughs> say, hey, go help someone do this. Yeah, of course. That might work. I'll, you know, uh, but with each, like, as, as mm. the cycle grows longer, the issues get harder and, and you need, like, you need to have known about that issue for three months to have all the background information, blah, 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 and it's terrible. And, and it would, like, completely soul crush anyone who already wasn't working on that issue. I mean, it soul crushes us too. Like it, it's pretty bad, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'd love to think of more ways to, to get people to, and it's like what um, Brian was saying with the, with companies, if we somehow convince them that the, that being a mentor is, is very important that maybe we get the I get to take half day of mentoring, mentoring, and then half day of sprinting. Yeah, I think I think we should I think we should think about this some more. Yeah. Like li like list of like all of the blockers, yep. and then brainstorm if there's anything that we can do. I there could thanks the trouble like even if you think like oh well sure on the day you have to work so instead of on the day. You know, why don't you go through your issue queue and pick out, you know, five issues, tag them novice, update the issue summary with the remaining tasks, and then, like, and then we'll use those. But, like, even, like, the, the part of the day that somebody would take to do that is 
they're still under pressure to just be working on the things that they have to work on. So it's going to take a lot of thinking. Okay, we should probably be done very soon, like very soon. Okay. 15 minutes. I will be quick. Well, uh, Tim needs to get set up. It's already not working. Oh, you're not next? Oh, okay. Well, Donna needs to get set up. Uh, I think there is kind of controversy here. Uh, from one kind, uh, from one side, Kathy said that one of the uh, things that we have achieved is that we have uh, offloaded part of the work from core maintainers, and to become more effective, we need to work with core maintainers more. Um, so, the question is, what if we try to work with core maintainers before the day, uh, before the Friday, uh, to not to not bother them on Friday? What we tried to do with the country maintainers this time and failed, by the way. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, can I have the last word? You can totally have the last word. All right. Um, I don't think it's an either or thing. Like, I don't think we either take these people and bring them to mentors or take these people and bring them to core maintainers. You can't untalk this. Like you said, uh, we can brainstorm some way that that will satisfy all of us combined. So, yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay, now everybody quit. <laughs> Don't. Now it's all yours. <laughs> Here's.